Hello, my name is Sunil Abraham. I'm professor of Family Medicine Department at Christian Medical College, Vellore. I would say quickly there are three reasons. One is a perception problem because the young doctors who pass out feel that it is not a glamorous specialty. They think that you have to be a cardiologist or a nephrologist or a radiologist to uh, have a specialty that is accepted and has some esteem. So that is an issue that they don't, um, they feel that this is not a glamorous specialty. The second problem is a paisa problem. You know, when you are in a procedural specialty like uh, radiologist or interventional radiology, you make a lot more money. I'm not saying there is not enough money in family medicine. There's definitely enough money, but people feel you make more money in other specialties. The third one is a policy problem. Because if you look at countries like the UK or Canada or Australia or the Scandinavian countries, they all have a good foundation of family medicine. And you cannot see a specialist without being first seen by your family doctor. And that policy has not come to India yet. The government is, given, uh, is giving a lot of uh, focus on hospital care and tertiary care, ignoring the primary care. So these are the reasons why it has not grown forward. There have been studies done in other countries. For example, they did a study in the US and they found that in a population of 1,000 people, it's only less than 1% who get admitted in a tertiary teaching hospital. So all our current medical education, or most of it, happens in this tertiary teaching hospital. By the time the diseases they see are very rare and very focused. But when they go back into the community, they are faced with situations they don't know how to handle. They are faced with situations when they don't know what is going on. So if you increase the duration of medical education in the community, they will learn about more common problems and where problems present to the doctor much early in their diseases. And that is very important. We have tried doing that in CMC and it is making an impact. When, when people age, there are a few issues that they face. One is they have multiple diseases. The aged person may have diabetes, hypertension, COPD, uh, musculoskeletal problems, depression, prostate problem, whatever. And they need somebody who can manage all these things or most of the problems, most of the problems that with one physician. And otherwise, it's very tedious for them to go to one speciality to the other. The other problem is going to the hospital is becoming more and more a harrowing experience because you had to go to the busy traffic, you had to go there, wait in line. So elderly people may not be healthy enough to do that. And they are also looking for people whom they know on a continuous long-term basis. So I see a great role for family physicians to give geriatric care. I personally have worked in a very rural place. Soon after my MBBS, I worked in a village of 1,500 population, and I know the realities of working in a rural place. It is challenging. And I think there are three issues people face there. One is schooling, because when the children grow up, they have to go to a proper school. And so that makes them leave the rural place. The second issue is the support system, because the infrastructure and the support system in rural hospitals are very poor. The third thing is the salary because they make less money uh, when they are in a rural place. So currently, of the about 50,000 MBBS seats, we have only about 10,000 postgraduate seats. So if the government made about 50% of postgraduate seats to be family medicine, and then once you are about 23 or 24, you finish your MBBS, and then you go for a family medicine training. So you, are, you have become a specialist by the age of 28 or 29. You are 28. You work about five years in a rural place. Then you can move on if you want to. Because by the time your children are ready to go to school and the government should give a career path for them, for family physicians who are trained to be given consultants post in the rural place and they should give a salary incentive for them. So that if that happens on a continuous cycle, then you have people coming for five years. Some may stay on, some may move on. But the problem in the, with the community health centers is that you don't have the right kind of doctors. So you need more family doctors there who can manage most of the problems, 80 to 90 percent of the problems, and refer which is needed. So that will be a solution to increase the uh, health care in the rural areas. We have a Department of Family Medicine for the past six years, and we are only one of the two medical colleges in the whole country with the Department of Family Medicine. So currently we have 10 faculty we most of us work in this 46 bedded unit for the urban poor called the low cost effective care unit some of us work in the urban there's an ambulatory care family medicine center where patients are given ambulatory care that means there is no place to get admitted 
but they can come as a one stop place for most of their medical problems, get the drugs there, give the investigations there, and you have minor procedures also being done there. There is one of the family medicine faculty working in the emergency department and two others working in the rural hospital. When I sit in my OPD, there are two things that I'm focused on. One is I see patients of all ages and I manage problems across all disease patterns and all organs. So my one patient could be an infant, the next patient could be a man with depression, another person could be somebody with an abscess which needs drainage. So we manage a breadth, whole breadth of problems. The other one is our focus is not on the disease, our focus is on the person. So I might have a person, Raju, who comes to me today with his hypertension, but tomorrow he might come to me with fever. And day after tomorrow he might come with a marital conflict. But my focus is not on how is his diabetes or hypertension, which is important, but who is Raju? You know, what are his issues? How do I know him? And that relationship is the foundation of family medicine. And that's what makes us different. So on a typical day, I would see patients with multiple problems. I also see people whom I have known for many years. So the CMC, the main hospital, is about 2,300 bedded hospital. And they found about, more, about 40 years ago that the local poor people did not have a place to go for their basic health problems and basic admissions. So they started this unit, unit called the Low Cost Effective Care Unit in 1982. So it's a 46-bedded hospital about one kilometer away from the main hospital. And we only see poor patients from around about five kilometers around us. So when they come, when they come for the first time, they pay 25 rupees as a lifetime registration fees. After that, the consultations are free. We have 46 beds and all these beds are free. We ask them to pay for the drugs. We don't usually give out free drugs unless there is an emergency when we do help them. So we manage about 80 to 90 percent of the problems with which they come. And they have access to all the investigations of the main hospital. We have consultants from the main hospital coming to us, giving free consultations for them if you ask them to. So we have no other specialist. We have five family medicine specialists and two community medicine specialists and few other junior doctors along with all our other staff who run this place. So the, the model is that the main hospital <clears throat> makes profit by treating patients who come with high, who need high tech interventions, etc. And that is used to subsidize the care that is given in the low cost unit.